tell us a bit about obviously what, what went on yesterday in terms of the terrorist attack and, and with the EDL's response to it? Um, I like everyone else, so, so, saw what happened. I don't know about you, but man, it nearly brought me to tears and anger. Upset and anger, complete anger. I was witnessing. And then I think that this has just happened on our streets of our capital to one of our armed forces. Why do you think it has happened? Though? I know why it's happened. It's happened because there's an open neglect and an open disgust at our forces by members of the Muslim community. And it's, been, and it, and it's something that's been allowed to flourish. From when they attacked our troops in Luton, to the police's response was to protect them and arrest English people, to then they attacked our troops in Dagenham, and they were allowed to, when they protest against our soldiers, they don't have to protest a mile away. Like, if we want to protest against a mosque, we have to protest miles away. When they protest against our soldiers, they protest two feet within them, spitting at them, spitting at their mums. Yeah? That out of disrespect that the government's done nothing to protect. Then they start burning poppies. Nothing again. Nothing happens. I get arrested and get a, a fine in court that's seven times worse than their pathetic £50 fine for burning poppies. This is just a progression of them taking to the streets against our armed forces. And no one... What, do we have any confidence that David Cameron's government are going to do anything to actually get to the root cause of this problem? They're not. But what do you think can be done? What can be done? Actually, ta they, what they're doing, all these different things, even down to grooming gangs, are symptoms of the problem. Now, in, in England, when you think about it, you had one girl raped by 90 Muslim men. Yeah? One girl. You've had 90 Muslims arrested in the last six months in Bradford alone. You've got a documentary on tonight about Telford. You've got 60 girls. You've got Oxford, where they're putting up M and scorning it on a girl's arse. Yeah? And people are just not doing anything about it. That's what's happening. People are coming so... just it's so, it's so common practice for terrorists being arrested to bomb sank and blow sank up. Girls being raped and groomed. If one Muslim girl was passed around by a group of Christian men, the whole country would be on fire. That would be their response. And the media's response would be like, oh, well, they're just for, just for, they justified their anger because of what's happened. We're justified in our anger. We are justified to be so blood fucking angry at what's happened to one of our troops. We're justified to be so angry at the grooming of our girls by Muslim paedophile gangs. And the response by the media, the response by the, pe by, by the, by the police, by the politicians, is to bend over backwards to avoid the word Islam, or Muslims, Asian grooming gangs, all this, it, it's a political attack. No, it's not. It's an Islamist, Muslim, terrorist attack. And they've done it in the name of Islam, and even his last statement that the man said, Allah's peace and forgiveness. But at, this is what they say when we sit here, Islam's religion of peace. Quite simply, it's not. Quite frankly, it's not. But what do you think is going to going to be achieved by, for example, going there and protesting like you did yesterday? Well, we went there last night because groups of Muslims are walking around the street shouting Allah Akbar after one of our lads has been beheaded. That's the facts of it. So you went there in response to them shouting Allah? Well, originally we went in to show solidarity with the forces and anger. We, I didn't know what to do, but something had to be done. People can't just sit in their houses shouting at their TVs anymore because that's what people have done for 15, 20 years. Everyone's saying the same thing, the same message, but no one's doing anything about it. And the fact is, if that would have happened to a Muslim, they'd come out and do something about it. Someone draws a cartoon in a foreign third world shithole, shithole driven shithole of a country, uh, and they're on the streets in their thousands across this country, attacking police officers. Do you know what I mean? And the sympathy is with them. Saying, oh, but you have to enter blasphemy laws to stop offending Islam and don't offend Muslims. And everyone's talking about offending Muslims. I don't care if they're offended. I'm offended every day. We are offended as the British public every single day by Islamic atrocities, whether it be worldwide or in this country, by their attitude, their non-integration, and the stereotypically the way that their, their community is acting upon itself in this country. Now, I know it's not all Muslims. I know some Muslims are great. I know that some of the best people I've met growing up in Luton are Muslims. But their ideology, the way it's spreading in this country, David Cameron's on TV, I just watched it earlier, saying that this is a distortion of Islam and we will, we will not surrender to extremism. You won't surrender to extremism because you're actually promoting extremism, you muppet. You're actually working with Saudi Arabia, who are funding all the madrasas and all the mosques in this country. They are funding the spread of Salafi and Wahhabi sects of Islam. The most extreme sects that are all of the majority of these terrorists come from these sects. And we're funding it. What are they doing about Anjum Chowdhury? He's got a school for Sharia in London. Still operating now. Still today after what happened to our troops yesterday. He'll still be sitting somewhere giving anti-British forces speeches and inciting Muslims against our forces. 
and saying that they deserve to die and they're burning in hell. Nothing's being done. But when you talk, it sounds like you're really anti-Muslim and really anti-Islam. I'm really angry. But who is it that you're actually against? I'm against Islamist ideology. I think Muslims are the first victims of Islam. Standard. They've been brought up and brainwashed from the age of four into this ideology which d promotes complete intolerance against other faiths. Now, there are some Muslim sects, when I've looked in and I've read, I've read quite a lot about Ahmadiyyas and, and these certain sects, which are great and are completely peaceful. But they're banned from even entering Mecca. They represent 1% of Muslims. When they want to build a mosque, it's the fellow Sunni and, and Shias who protest against them. So, it's like they're talking about our forces as well. You've had 225 Muslims killed this week in Iraq by Sunni v Shia. Yeah. Now, why don't you talk about that? So they're talking about what our forces are trying to save their country, trying to protect them from dictators who massacre them. And now they're all crying out. Listen to them all crying out for the British forces to get involved in Syria. So you don't want them in Iraq and Afghanistan, but now you're crying out for them in Syria. Fair. Who saved you in Bosnia? British forces. Who saved you in Bosnia? The British forces. You don't remember that? You want to cut off our lads' heads. But what obviously people would say to that, and so I'm playing devil's advocate here, is that they'd say that... The Muslim population is vast, and this is a very small percentage. This is one attack in the last few years. What would you say to that in terms of targeting Muslims and targeting Islam? Well, I'd say that we're at war, and unless you can uh, name the enemy, you won't win that war. Unless our government are strong enough to name the enemy, the enemy is Islam. The enemy to this country, these attacks that are happening, you say it's one attack, one successful attack. You had six Muslims from Birmingham who were planning to blow up the English defence league with guns, bombs, knives, yeah? You had another six from Muslim, uh, or eight Muslims from Birmingham who were planning one of the biggest atrocities the country's ever seen, rivaling 7-7 and rise, rivaling September 11th. This is all in the last three months. You had Richard Dart and his bunch of merry mugs planning to blow up Wooten Bassett. You have had a bombing every single month for the last two years, football stadiums, aeroplanes, shopping centres. Now, if the British police would not stop these atrocities, you see how angry everyone's feeling now. Maybe then people will realise we're in war. We're out of war. We are at a war. And what I'll ask the Muslims are, what are you doing to stop these extremist sects in your community? Because Saif al-Islam and his bunch of mugs have got a stall set up every Friday in Luton. Every single Friday, you're doing nothing. What are you doing to stop Anjem Chowdhury and his little bunch of idiots walking around Walthamstow promoting hatred, having their Sharia school for London? What are you doing to close down the 100 Sharia law courts that are treating women like dogs already? What are you doing to make all of us realise that it's not every Muslim? What are you doing? When are you going to take to the streets in outrage against what your fellow Muslims have done. When are you, we going to hear you do anything? You, if someone draws a cartoon in a foreign country, you're out on the streets. You want to kick off. You want to kick off over everything and anything in this country. Whereas, when are you actually going to take to the streets in anger and frustration against your fellow Muslim brothers? Then maybe then we'll sit up and we'll think, yeah, actually, here, they, they actually want to integrate and they want, to, they want what's right for Britain. So what, in terms of the EDL, what do you think <coughs> the EDL can do to try and help the situation or fight back, as you said, like you said, you're fighting a war? In, so what does that more involve? Enlightening people, waking people up, letting people understand that what's, where we're at now, yeah, we've got more Muslims in this country, more Muslim extremists, terrorists, atrocities, it's gone up 60% every single year, the terror threat. The amount of arrests for terrorism goes up 60% every single year. Yeah? Now, where we're at now, 2013, Right? <clears throat> Muslims are having 5.6 children. Average ma Muslim male, 5.6 children in this country. Every average non-Muslim, 1.3. Right? 30 years ago, this town, Luton, we had one mosque, three or 4,000 Muslims. Right? Within 30 years, <coughs> 26 mosques, 40, 50,000 Muslims. What do you think it's going to be like in the next 30 years? What do we think it's going to be like? We're sleepwalking into an oblivion. Our whole entire race and our whole entire country is sleepwalking itself into Islamic domination across our country where everyone's so petrified, no one will dare even say the word. Everyone, everyone wants to whisper the word Muslim. These bombers were Muslim. Even the press last night saying, how do you know they're Muslim? They're shouting out our Akbar. So to people who don't know anything about the English Defence League, and this is the first time they've heard about you, what does the English Defence League stand for? And what's the future for the EDL from here? The English Defence League started four years ago as a pressure group in support of our troops. It's evolved as we've, gr as we've grown. It's changed a lot. It's been a snowball that got out of control in the early days without us knowing how to harness it. People are joined from all over the country. Basically, we're normal lads 
and lasses from towns and cities who will watch what's going on, who live in these towns that are plagued by Islamist gangs and, and out of control Islamic communities, and we want to make a change. I'm not saying we have all the answers, I'm not saying we can get in power and change everything, but God, by God we're going to try, and by God we're going to do everything we can to highlight these issues and make sure that the average British person sits back and thinks, what will it be like in 20 years? That's all we're saying. What do you think it's going to be like in 20, 30 years? Do you think it's going to be better? And if you don't think it's going to be better, and the truth is you say, no, this country's going to the pits, then why are you not doing something about it? So what can the average person do? So the average person who's sitting at home on the computer, what can they do to support the cause, support the EDO and, and get out of it? Support the cause by getting on the streets. We're, we're, see, for four years here, we have no money, we have no funding. If we had funding, we'd be miles away from where we are now in, in campaign-wise. We would be doing so much to combat different things, the spread of halal meat. We're eating halal meat and all our supermarkets are selling us halal meat. Now people say, well, what's the big problem with halal meat? Well, only Muslims can work in, in halal arbitraries. So it's fascist in that sense, because that's the only people going to be controlling the meat. It's spreading across the whole country, which is creating a job market simply for Muslims, which means British butchers are being completely smacked out of the way and lose, they're shutting every other week. We're eating it, we're funding it, 20% of the funds from it go to fighting Islamic Jihad abroad. All these different things, it's inhumane, it, it, it's complete, there's no need to not stun an animal in the year 2013 for some backward religious belief from 1400 years ago. It's quite simple. If you want to eat halal meat, you go to a country that you can eat halal meat, but not in this country, it's spreading everywhere. So there's so many different things like that. We have campaigns, local divisions, and as I said, it's a complete mixture of people, the English Defence League, man. Sometimes it's for the brave, sometimes it's for the strange, but <laughs> it's, just, it's the truth of it. So what's the next thing that you've got planned? When can people come out and show support for the EDO and hopefully support it in a proper way without worrying about the car bar? Yeah, there's a demonstration. You see, there's a demonstration in Newcastle on Saturday, which is against the Islamification of the West End of Newcastle. You know, remember Biker Grove? They're now turning that into an Islamic madrasa. But that in itself, people think, well, what's wrong with that? When you look at who's behind this Islamic madrasa, who's funding it? We've done reports and studies and looking at for all these different places like in Luton, Luton Town Centre, Luton, Luton's Discover Islam Centre. It's complete extremists behind it. So who, what form of Islam is then going to be taught in that, in that centre? Do you know what I mean? So we're looking at targeting grooming gangs. We're doing things across the country. To be honest, I've been away for nine months. I've had my own problems. But I'm back now and it's time for people just to do their piece, man. Do, do your bit for your country. That's it. And when the government see, well, hopefully they're going to wake up after the last recent vote and, and they'll start t actually enforcing some of the policies that they promised to enforce against Islamic extremism. And people say, what's the biggest threat to this country? That's the biggest threat, whether you like it or not. Islam, the biggest threat. So in terms of the, obviously the events that happened yesterday, is there anything you want to add about yesterday or about what the EDO are going to do? Yesterday with regards to attacking police, English Defence League supporters have not just gone down there to attack police officers. It's just simply not true. They've gone down there to show solidarity with the forces and groups of Muslims are roaming the streets. Simple. People are going to want to have a confrontation with them. And, and that's what's happened. One, one, one black lad got killed, Mark Duggan. The whole London comes out burning. So, I mean, we've just had a, one, of our, our, one of our soldiers has been beheaded in broad daylight while shouting out our Akbar and telling us this in the name of Islam and telling us that our, our, our wife and children are next. And you wonder why, and why we were angry. And somehow our anger's not justified in any sort of way. Sometimes, somehow, we shouldn't even be out on the streets. So what would you say to any other extremists that are planning a similar attack? Well, you won't... All you do is wake people up. So it's like when people say they're going to attack us or they're going to kill me. You kill me, this country will riot. So, there's your challenge. <laughs> so you're going to ask about anything? Back just that uh, on Bank Holiday Monday, We'll be going to Downing Street, 4pm. This will be a supporting our troops demonstration. This won't necessarily be English Defence League because the majority of people who contacted me to attend this event are not English Defence League supporters who, um, who do not actually have... I, I have family, I have friends that are not, do not feel the way I feel against Islam. Do you know what I mean? So it's, not, it's, it's in my view and it's people within the English Defence League. So this dememonstration to support our troops will just be a broad to support our troops. This is not going to be an anti... Um, Islam demonstration, it'll be a support our troops demonstration and an anti-government against the people in 10 down the street who are facilitating and accommodating these scum. Cool. And where can people find out more about that? On our website, www.englishdefenseleague.org or follow me on Twitter. It's quite funny, actually. Twitter. Yeah. Follow my... Uh, what's, what's your Twitter name? 
Oh, no, actually, no. What is it? EDL Tom? EDLT Robinson, yeah. Where you can follow the followers of the Religion of Peace being extremely peaceful in their messaging. So specifically to the attacks yesterday, what do you think uh, made these people want to want to carry out such a horrific attack? Islamist ideology. And if you look at it, they wanted to die as well. They wanted to die that day. Which is what you have to try and get inside their way of thinking is that if they die fighting the name of Allah, they're going straight to heaven. They're going to paradise, which is better than this life. That's why they don't care. So when you see them, there's no care that they're about to die. And any of these people, that's why I shout Allah Akbar, God is great, just before they die. You have to try and understand that mentality and that ideology that's in their head and way of thinking is that, well, I'm going to a better place. I'm going to paradise. And the thing is, as I said, we can't have any, I can't have any faith that these problems are going to get solved. In, in British jails, 800 Muslims are being radicalised and leaving prison every year in British jails. Now, I'll just come out of custody. A lot of people say... I oppose illegal immigration, but I've become an illegal immigrant, yeah? <laughs> I went to New York, I think it's brilliant. Though. Well, I went to New York to have my say against militant Islam. I got in, I used my friend's passport because I wasn't allowed in. I got sent to prison. I served my time. When I went to jail, um, I see firsthand. I spent time in five different pr prisons. Um, Wandsworth, Woodhill, Wayland, Bedford. I got moved from one to the other because none of the prisons can control me being in there because all the Muslims wanted to kill me and kick off and riot because I was in there. And I heard firsthand the stories from all the screws, all of them, about Islam in, in jail, about how it is used as, as a gang, how it is spread as a gang with violence across, through the prisons. And I asked them, what are the prisons doing about it? What are the authorities doing about it? Nothing. Why aren't they doing nothing about it? Because they're too scared to even try and stop it or try and somehow combat this extremist ideology that's spreading through the prisons and radicalising some of the most hardened and tough lunatics in the country that are in these prisons. And I don't know yet, I know this lad, it's come out already that he's a convert. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he converted in prison. And if he did, then what are they going to do about it? What are they going to do about all these converts that are coming out of jail radicalised? But what can Red be done? Like you said, you've been there and seen it first time. What can be done to stop it? Muslim only wings. Simple. But surely that propagates Islam and, and that, that ideology more between them. No, it doesn't. No, it, Muslim only wings. Stop having Salafi and Wahhabi and, 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 and those sort of Saudi sect imams within the prisons. Yeah, you need segregation, same as in France. You had segregation in Northern Ireland, Protestant Catholic prisons. You need Muslim-only jails so that young non-Muslim and Christian kids are, are, are not being targeted, brainwashed, manipulated and forced into an Islamic ideology to come out one day and behead a soldier because they've been targeted. You've got these centres, live and let live. Don't come force your religion on us. If someone wants to look into Islam, he'll come down to your mosque and look into Islam. Stop coming out on the streets. Stop trying to force Islam down everyone's throat. Stop opening centres like you have Discover Islam Centre, trying to spread and fund and spread your ideology. They said with that centre they're opening Luton, they won't rest until Islam is in every house in this town. And our council supported the opening of the centre. We don't want Islam in every house. You Muslims would not let their son or daughter convert to Christianity. So stop coming literally into our houses and taking our sons and daughters out and converting them. Simple. What do you think made them want to carry out such a horrific threat? Well, worldwide, see all these attacks worldwide, beheading the people. So that, that's standard practice, isn't it? It's Islam. So you think that they've replicated a, an attack that's... They've replicated Ken Bigley. They've replicated all these different Al-Qaeda attacks. You have the black flag of Al-Qaeda openly flown throughout our capital, the black Shahada. I mean, so does it make you, how does it make you feel knowing that these people are living amongst us? Well, I've known they're living amongst us. Oh, yeah, I'll, queue, I'll queue up next to them in the bank. That's the reality of it. But how does that make you feel, though? Disgusted. So you're queuing up with people in a bank who potentially want to chop your head off in public like these people. It makes me angry. At not, I, my, my most anger is not at them, because I know how they feel. I know how their ideology works, and I know how it's being spread. It's our government allowing it to be spread in this way. It's our government and police forces allowing this. It's like those lads that were going to plan up, blow up the English Defence League. They're all monitored on watch lists. I don't know if this clown was yet, I don't know if it's come out yet that he was probably on, on an extremist watch list as well. Right? If these people are a threat to our country and a threat to its people, intern them. Put them in jail, indefinitely if you have to. So a message directly to Surya and Ryan David Cameron, what are the EDL feeling about this and what are they going to do now to stop it? No, the British public, which we've tried warning you about for years, is that there's only so much, so much the British public's going to take. Yeah. 
I don't advocate any violence, okay? I don't want anyone to go out and burn a mosque or attack innocent Muslims. No, it's not the answer because there are, they will be innocent Muslims and you are then as bad as these scumbags that are doing it, yeah? But Theresa May and David Cameron, it will be your fault when it happens. It will be your fault because you're the people that have allowed this. You're the people who have not acted. And when people don't see light at the end of a tunnel, yeah, when people are that scared for their country's future, you're going to create monsters. You're going to do it. That's exactly what you're going to do. And, I'm not, and that's not me advocating it, wanting it, wishing it. I'm just saying, realistically, that's what's going to happen. And there'll be innocent people getting hurt, and it's going to be blood on your hands. Our troop blood's already on your hands.